Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I am going to be showing you a bridal beauty tutorial. If you don't know, I am a bridal makeup artist and I wanted to show you a look that seems to be very popular among my brides. So I figured if they're really liking that and I'm getting asked a lot to create a look similar to that, that I would show you guys how I do it as well. So if you want to see that, then just keep watching. I want to say a huge thank you to Biosounds for sponsoring this portion of today's video. If you've never heard of Biosounds before, they are a clean beauty brand, meaning they are very thoughtful with the ingredients that they put into their skincare products. And the reason why I wanted to feature Biosounds on today's video is because one of the best things that you can do before your wedding is to get a good skincare routine. It makes my job as a makeup artist a lot easier. It's going to make your makeup look better, sit better, and wear better. And I can tell you from experience, when I work with clients, I can tell if they have a good skincare routine or not just by the touch of the skin and if they aren't taking care of their skin I have to go through extra measures to make sure I can prep their skin properly but if you're taking care of it behind the scenes it's just better for everybody and I've got to say you guys if I'm allowing a skincare brand to sponsor my video that means they are the real deal because I'm not giving up my normal skincare routine for just anybody if you've been following me through the years it's been a roller coaster ride of acne texture dry flakiness. I've had it all. And I've really gotten the texture of my skin under control, the acne under control, and I'm really proud of myself for finding products that really work for me. I was really excited to give Biosance a try because I trusted their products, I trusted their ingredients, and I felt like they had products that would really cater to my needs for skincare. One of the things that I'm so excited about them as a brand is that they asked me to make sure I don't use any filters because they love seeing natural skin texture up close and that it's okay to have a little bit of texture and I definitely am excited to work with a brand that promotes that. That being said, I want to go over the products that I've been using. You guys, I brought this all with me on vacation and vacation, it is inevitable. My skin's going to break out and be terrible. And for the first time ever, because of these products, I didn't break out at all. I do have a couple breakouts currently right now, but that's because I had a couple weddings this weekend and I had on makeup and I wore it for way too long. It always happens. But before this weekend, my skin was completely clear. I was honestly shocked that these products were able to keep my acne at bay even while traveling. So I start off with the Squalane and Amino Acid Gentle Cleanser. This, you guys, if you look at their website, it has zero bad reviews. Everybody has nothing but great things to say about this cleanser, myself included. It's very gentle for the skin. It is made for all skin types. One of my favorite parts about this is it's actually made to hydrate the skin, which for my dry skin type is really wonderful. It has a non-stripping formula for soft hydrated skin and it digs deep into pores to remove dirt, debris, and makeup without irritating the skin. And I don't know, it's just a fabulous, fabulous cleanser. My skin has really enjoyed it. I do have texture along my chin. That's where I seem to get it nowadays. So I've been using the Squalane and Lactic Acid Resurfacing Night Serum before I go to bed every night. And I love it because it's one of those retexturizing serums, which with a lot of other brands, I find to be way too harsh for my skin. This is not harsh at all. My skin really likes it. Lactic acids in here are going to dissolve dead surface cells and reveals like soft luminous skin below and I think a lot of you will enjoy this because it fights uneven texture and signs of aging as well. Over time it's going to diminish those fine lines, give you a softer texture to the skin and overall just give you a brighter complexion. So, so far I've really been liking this. My chin does seem to be a lot smoother. There's a lot less bumps so this is a really great one. This has been a game changer in my routine. The Squalane vi and Vitamin C Rose Oil. This was actually in Allure Best of Beauty winner. This is what is giving me the glow that you guys are seeing on my skin right now. I just take a couple drops of this on my palm, warm it up, and put it on my skin. If I have a bride with severely dry skin, I definitely would use this on her skin before makeup application and let it settle into the skin before I get to the complexion. So this is supposed to increase your skin's radiance by improving the tone and the texture. And they claim it boosts the skin's firmness and suppleness. And I want 
110% agree with that. My skin definitely feels more firm and just plumper in the best way possible. Because my skin is so dry, I really love a super thick moisturizer. So the Squalane Omega Repair Cream is awesome because it's rich without being too heavy on the skin. It's great prep before makeup as well. So if you are somebody with dry skin and you're looking for an intense hydration, this one does well. I'm very, very picky with my moisturizers and my skin just feels so hydrated throughout the day with this. This is even supposed to deeply smooth rough textures and fine lines as well. This leaves the skin exceptionally soft, exceptionally supple, and like all of their products, it's contributing to this dew and this glow that I have on my skin. And the final product that I've been using from them in my routine is the Squalane and Marine Algae Eye Cream, another product I'm very, very picky about are eye creams because my eyes are very quick to get bumps when I use too thick or too intense of an eye cream, and this has been perfect. I do only use it in the morning. They actually do suggest you use this before makeup because it does deliver long-lasting hydration, which creates the perfect base for that concealer. This is also an Allure Best of Beauty winner, and I can definitely see why. I love this before makeup, especially if you have more mature skin. It really does plump that area and smooth it out, and it gets into those fine lines so that when the makeup is on top, it's just going to fill those. Current moment, by Essence is having a friends and family sale, but if you are watching this later, they were kind enough to give me a code Morgan Turner 20. If you aren't watching this during the sale, that is when the code will work. If you are interested in purchasing any of the products that I spoke about today, they will be linked down in the description box. And without further ado, we're going to continue on with the makeup portion. Seriously, my skin is already prepped. I don't feel the need to apply any primer or anything because the skincare did the job. That is just how important skincare is. If you have a good skincare routine, a primer really isn't necessary. Now, all of these products that I'm featuring today, they aren't from my makeup kit. Sanitation purposes, I also didn't want to have to sanitize it after I used it. So I put out products that would create a similar look, but are just from my own personal collection. I will tell you what I use in my kit though, if it is worthwhile for you. We are going against my normal routine and I'm going to do eyebrows first. I'm going to try and stick to these Sigma Beauty and Beauty Bird collaboration brushes. They're in front of me and I still am trying to play with the shapes. So I personally like to use eyebrow powder on my brides. Obviously it depends on the type of eyebrows that they have. You know, sometimes people do need something more stark like a pencil. Generally for a soft looking brow. I do love a brow powder. I'm just going to use a Sigma Beauty brow powder today. And what I like to do, I don't fill in my bride's brows like crazy. Normally, I just like to outline the shape and fill in sparse areas. We gotta put the hair back, y'all. So when I say outline, I definitely always get the arch that we define down here a little bit. Of course, what I do with brows depends person to person, but a brow powder is my favorite medium for the eyebrows for Bridal Beauty. And then of course you want to use an eyebrow gel so that the eyebrows stay all day. I'm using the Sigma Tint and Tame Brow Gel. Don't sleep on Sigma's eyebrow products. They have very good quality eyebrow products. Eyebrows are very, very important to make sure that you do before a wedding because if keep in mind that photography does take 20% of the makeup away. So it is important, you know, even if a bride is like, oh, that's a little bit bold, kind of got to tell them the photography will take it away. Okay, we are going straight to the eye. Eyes. I'm putting down a little bit of Too Faced Born This Way concealer. Sometimes I'll use concealer on my brides. Most of the time though, I do like to put down a primer, especially if they have oily skin. That's super important. But I don't have oily skin and I'm not getting married today, so I'm just gonna do concealer. So like I said, I'm going for that blushing bridal beauty kind of look. The palettes that I use for that is a mixture between the Wayne Goss Pearl palette, the Vizzy Art Paris Edit palette, and then also the Vizzy the Art Grande Pro 1X palette. Obviously, I didn't want to use all three in today's tutorial because that's just not realistic if you're trying to create this look. So a palette that I felt had all the shades that I would need is the Tartlet Juicy palette. They have a smaller version of it and it actually has identical shades in that palette to this one. Literally same names and everything, but I am going to be using this guy. It's not the most perfect bridal palette. It literally has everything that we need. The star of today's show is going to be the shade Petal right here. 
The most important shade for this look is any kind of dusty rose. The dusty rose in the Wayne Goss Pearl palette is what gets the most use for me lately. This is slightly more peachy. I did swatch them side by side to be able to tell the difference, but they are very, very close to each other. So we're gonna take some of Petal on my brush, and all I'm gonna do is just focus this in the outer corner. Don't be afraid to get the color on the lid. I mostly put it probably about halfway on the lid. I mean, this should go out without saying, but I'm applying the makeup based on my face shape and my eye shape. Depending on whatever needs of the bride, I will adjust based on their face shape and their eye shape. So we're focusing that out here. Make sure we get that good blend. And so that dusty shade, we're gonna come back to, don't worry. I'm gonna now use the shade Charmed right here. This is going to be similar to the Warm Mauve shade in the Wayne Goss palette. This one is slightly more brown. They're close enough. This is just going to add some extra depth. That. This one is definitely more brown, so I'm gonna go in with more of Petal to try and pink it up a little bit more. Now, if I were using the Wayne Goss Pearl Palette, I'd actually get a matte brown from my Busy Art Grande Pro 1X to kind of neutralize, but with this Tarte Palette, I think that did that all in one shadow. So I want us to look a little bit more blushing since that crease shade we use is quite brown. So I'm gonna use the Rose shade, which is a light pink, and and we're gonna use this kind of out on the edges right here. So if I have a bride who I'm not necessarily doing this blushing bridal look, but they have pink in their wedding colors, a lot of times I will take whatever look they're wearing and I'll take a pinky shade and I'll use that to blend out the edges of the eye look. Just makes everything seem a bit more cohesive. Or taking any cream shade, I'm using Wishful right here. I'm gonna use that underneath the brow is going to lift the eye and it's also going to clean up the edges of the blend here and I'm going to put just a little bit of that cream shade all over the lid. At this point I'll ask the bride if they want any shimmer or matte. If they want it matte we'll keep it like this. I'll add a little bit more of the pinks and with this I mean you'll see you have a gorgeous kind of matte eye. If they do want some shimmer I like to mix some shimmery pink shades from my Viseart Paris Edit palette. Today I'm going to mix Paradise and Water Lily. So this Paradise is a nice pinky shade, but since I wanna neutralize it just a little bit, I'm mixing it with Water Lily. It's going to create a very, very light pink. I'm gonna do that with a brush though. Just put this basically where you put that cream shade down. It's going to add a subtle sparkle, nothing too metallic that's going to not play well in photography, but just enough shimmer to make the eyes pop. Okay, and if you need to go back with any crease shade, do that now. All right, and next we are going to move into eyeliner. I'm going to be using the MAC Black Track Fluid Line. Sometimes if a bride is very, very natural, I'll just use an eyeshadow for liner. But most of the time, if they're wearing false lashes, I like to get a pretty thin line on the upper lash line. I can't demo this, I just gotta do it in silence. A very important tip when you're doing eyeliner for photography is to make sure you get the eyeliner in between each of the lashes and even tight line with it if you want to be extra careful because that's going to make the lash line look so much fuller. Take some makeup remover on a cotton pad and clean anything up. Normally when I do makeup on myself you guys know I am a face makeup first kind of girl but when it comes to a bride I make sure I do eyes first so I can get all of this gunk that you see on this cotton pad off of this skin. We don't want any shimmer in unwanted areas. All right now it's time to move on to the under eye area. Sometimes I'll reapply some more eye cream if I feel like they need it, but I do like to apply an under eye corrector if they need it. I'm using the Charlotte Tilbury under eye corrector today. I'm just gonna pat this underneath the eye. I would say I use an under eye corrector on about 80% of my brides just because in photography you don't want them to catch those under eye bags. For every day I don't really care. But in terms of photography, you definitely want to make sure it's brightened, especially right under here. I want a little bit extra putting it under the whole eye. You don't need to do that. But right in this area where most people have their under eye circles, you definitely want to put that there. Okay, and then I do concealer first because I use airbrush makeup. I'm not using airbrush makeup for today's demo, but I'm just going to show you the order that I do things. So I'm using my Too Faced Born This Way concealer. This is actually one of the 
concealers that I use in my kit. I have a wide variety of concealers that I use, but this one is definitely one of my favorites, especially for coverage. Because I use airbrush makeup, sometimes it doesn't have the most amount of coverage, where I just don't feel like spending the time building it. So I actually use the concealer as extra coverage as well. So I'll take a lot of concealer and I blend it out over the areas that have redness on the skin. It just means that we have to use less foundation, which is better at the end of it all. You can see I'm running this over my nose and the redness on my cheeks and whatever's left on my brush because I use a brush to blend out, not a sponge. I'll put on any acne, anything to neutralize stuff that's gonna need extra coverage. Then I go in with foundation. Today I'm using the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. This guy is a fantastic universal foundation. Like I said, I do use airbrush in my kit because the company that I work for uses airbrush, so I use Temp2. The foundation that I use for my own personal wedding was the Dior Air Flash foundation, and I do recommend that this Makeup Forever Ultra HD. It's a great everyday foundation, but it also is nice and wears a long time for event makeup as well. So I think this foundation is wonderful. It doesn't have any sunscreen in it, so it's great for a occasion as well. It is time to set the face. Lately, I've been into using colored powder to set my face. I use the brand Cat Cosmetics. For today, I'm gonna use my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Setting Powder. So I'll use a setting powder that's a little bit lighter than the skin to set the under eye area and kind of the T-zone where you want that brightness just very lightly I don't use too much powder on my brides and then I'm gonna use something a little bit closer to my skin tone and I'll set the outsides of the face I use shade number one in the Charlotte Tilbury powder to set the under eyes and then I use shade number two to set the outside of the face for bronzing I like to use a neutral shade because I feel like I can contour with it as well I'm gonna use the Marc Jacobs Tantastic bronzer this was actually the bronzer that I used in my kit for the longest time I still have it in my kit I don't use it as much because I have a replacement for it but I kind of contour and bronze at the same time it depends on what the face needs you know but a lot of times what I would do, let me show you. I don't have the exact brushes that I need, but I'll take something more stiff that will pick up more pigments, and I use that to contour, just like this. It's very important, though, that you pay attention to the tone of the powder that you're using for this. This is just an example. So I'll use something stiffer like that to contour, and then I still take it, but on a softer brush, and then I'll just kind of do this to bronze and blend. Again, it varies on the situation how exactly I do this, but this is the perfect color. And then just to clean everything up, I'm taking that original lighter powder that we used. I'm just gonna put it underneath just to clean up, just like that. For blush, we are going back into the Tartlet palette and you're gonna use whatever dusty color that you use as your blush as well. Nothing looks more cohesive than this. I love when the blush matches that blushy color that you added to the look. So be careful because it is an eyeshadow if you are using that as an eyeshadow. Don't use a brush that's too dense. But it really just pulls the whole look together. So make sure whatever you used on the eyeshadow, you use on the cheeks. It's my favorite tip to pull together a blushing kind of bridal look. Remember that 20% that I said? Photography takes away 20% of the blush. So I do like to apply a little bit more than normal, as well as it will probably fade throughout the day. But if a bride is like, no, I'm not used to blush, that's too much, just take whatever you use to blend in the foundation, whether that be blush, an airbrush gun, run it right over the cheeks, and that's going to subdue it. Okay, highlight. Sometimes I like to use Hourglass if the bride is looking for a very soft glow. I do like to choose a highlight that has a pinky undertone to go with the blushing look. Today, I'm just using the YSL Taunt Couture Shimmer Powder in Shimmery Pink. And I'll have some brides say that they love a highlight, so I'll go ham with it. And some brides that are just looking for a nice glow from within for the bridal look. But really, you can get that look if you just use a little bit. So if you're looking for a subtle glow and you don't have a lot of highlights in your collection, just go like that. And really work on blending it out. And then you can even go in with whatever you use to apply the foundation to push it into the skin. That's going to give you that glow from within kind of look. 
And then we're gonna take some of that as well. This, I said this was YSL, I totally lied. This is Givenchy. I just don't use Givenchy in my collection very often. But I'm putting this highlight in the inner corner of the eye. It brightens up the look and also again, pulls the whole look together. And of course, we are not done with this palette. We're gonna finish with the lower lash line. And what I do normally is I just take the crease shades that I use, which in this case would be this shade and this shade, and I just run it along the lower lash line, nothing too crazy. I find that a lot of my clients get worried with the under eye wrinkles. Normally what I do is I take a clean blending brush and I really buff out that lower lash line shadow because it's going to buff out the fine lines and wrinkles and make the look even more smoky and blended looking. Going to quickly throw in mascara. I'm using my Armani Ice to Coat Mascara. Make sure it's waterproof if you're getting married. <laughs> but let me throw this on real quick. I put a quick coat on my upper lashes. Normally I like to focus my energy on the lower lashes because we are gonna go in with falsies. And my number one bridal lash has to be any lash from the Ardell Naked Lashes lines. Highly recommend these. So just a quick guide on the lashes. I have this kit. But 420 is my favorite for really small eyes or mature women who aren't used to wearing falsies. They're taking a risk. A lot of times I'll use these. Somebody who's going for a more natural look, I use 421. And then 422 and 424 are just for somebody who I just want to give a little bit of extra oomph to or they have longer lashes. I'm going to use today 424. I love these because they have a nice curl to them, but any naked lash from Ardell, literally, I'm not exaggerating, makes the perfect lash. Quick tip, if you're not as comfortable with lashes, you can always cut these up and break them and apply them like individual lashes, or sometimes I'll just cut off depending on the person, either the outer half or the inner half. And we just do a little bit on the outsides to work as a cat eye. But I will be right back. <laughs> lashes are on. I hope you can see how these lashes really pull the whole bridal look together. And these are Dell lashes, you guys. So special. They've been game changers in my makeup kit. They literally look like lash extensions. They look so natural and they're so fluffy. Highly recommend you looking into those lashes just for every day, not even for weddings, but they're my absolute favorite. We're gonna move on to lips. So I'm gonna use Charlotte Tilbury Super Size Me. This is like a blushy pink kind of lip liner. I typically would use Pillow Talk. That's probably my most used lip liner. It's a normal kind of pink shade, but I like something a little bit slightly bolder. So I'm gonna use this one. Filling it in just a little bit because this is gonna help with longevity. And then for lipstick, I'm gonna use Flower Beauty Naked Blush. Quick tip. Flower Beauty has some of the best bridal toned lipsticks. Highly recommend you look into these lipsticks. They're so cheap. They have such a high quality formula and the colors are perfect for weddings. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Oh, I love that as a bridal color. All right, I mean, this is a look. I'm gonna set my face with some Urban Decay All Nighter Spray. I use this on all my clients, no matter the skin type, because it's an event. And I mean, this setting spray is the truth. Okay, it really does make the makeup last longer. Okay, I'm gonna pull my hair down and I'll be back with the final look. All right, so here is how we're looking, a little bit pulled back. And this is how I get the blushing bridal look that a lot of my clients have been asking me for lately. It's natural, but it accentuates the natural features of the face. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love wearing this kind of look all day, every day. And again, a huge thank you to Biosance for sponsoring today's video. Make sure you get that skincare routine figured out before your wedding. Your makeup artist will thank you. Your photographs will thank you. I'm telling you, skincare is the number one most important thing that you can do as far as your makeup. Let me know if you have any questions down below about bridal beauty. And if you are curious, I actually do have a bridal makeup tutorial for the makeup look that I wore for my own wedding that I posted last year. It was a pink look as well, but it was a little bit brighter because I'm me. That was like my kind of blushing bridal kind of look. This one is a little bit more natural and I also recently just posted my bridal makeup kit if you want to see the other products that I tend to use. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Everything that I use today will be linked down below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I would love it if you would consider taking the time to do so and I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.